Hey there hunters, welcome back to the Gunner's Guild. So I'm going to be continuing on actual tradition here, so we're going to be discussing and explaining bowgun mechanics, which seems like we don't really do very much anymore. So Slumbreak is new and we're fresh off the boat here in Elgato, so there's a lot to unpack. First thing I want to explain and get out of the way is the new critical firepower skill for Light Bowgun. This was a hot topic to discuss from the demo and the weapon showcase trailers. Unfortunately, because of marketing and how they showed it, Capcom made it appear much better than it actually was. So let's just break down how this thing functions. First off, the basics. What this fire mode does is that it's basically the raw version of Elemental Reload. So we're going to be getting a flat boost in damage in exchange for two levels of recoil. That's two levels of recoil we gain. Gain is bad, more recoil is bad. On top of that, we're going to be cutting in half our critical distance. Seems simple, right? Yeah, but there's more to it. So let's cover each of those properties individually. First, let's start with the damage boost. This is not a universal damage boost for all ammo types. Each ammo gets a different bonus. Normal ammos get 30%, spreads get 20%, and pierce gets 10%. This does not affect sticky, slice, or cluster ammo. It does affect the raw portion of our elemental ammo, but it looks like it's like five or 10% just the raw side. It's really slow, especially since it's the raw part. So with that being said, it's nowhere near the powerhouse that we we're expecting it to be. Capcom only showed the normal ammo in the little trailers and stuff, and so it looked like it was just going to be 30% across the board. Now on paper, this is still a great skill since 30% damage for a normal ammo and 20% for a spread is pretty damn solid. Normals on paper could compete with spreads in terms of damage, and this would kind of equalize the ammo imbalance between these three raw ammos. I don't know why they don't just change the motion values and other properties and stuff, but I guess this was a step in the right direction, although be it kind of convoluted. Sadly though, it is just downhill from here. Moving on to the recoil stages. Two stages of recoil is insanely high. Rapid fire ammos and level 3 ammos on your light bow guns, which is what we're primarily going to be using anyways, will often not end up with fast recoil with this switch skill on, even if you do have three levels of recoil down. As you may know, having more recoil increases the time between your shots, so it's effectively lowering your DPS. So there's not much of a point in lowering your damage to try and gain damage. So the only way the switch skill is going to be worthwhile is if we can keep our fastest fire rate. Unfortunately, it doesn't really balance out, and that's kind of the crux of the problem here. The only way to mitigate this recoil loss in a lot of weapons is to use silencers, which reduce your recoil by one, and it does stack with the recoil down skill. And beyond that, some weapons also need to use the new tune up skill, which I have not seen in a decoration yet, just on some armor pieces and charms. Tune up makes your barrel mods better, so you can get another rank of recoil off your silencer, or another level of reload speed if you have no mod on. So it's great, but now you're also investing in more skills which could help your damage to get back the damage that you're losing for a skill that's supposed to give you damage. It's, like I said, it's kind of convoluted. You're just kind of sustaining your recoil penalty, which is kind of bad. And also typically you're just not gonna run power barrel with critical fire rate too because of the critical distance changes, which is another damage loss. So in the end, we're actually only gaining like 10 or 5% damage over, you know, standard shooting because of all the stuff we actually have to put in. But let's go ahead and move on to the critical distance modifiers, which is kind of where this whole train wreck ends up. So for the critical distance modifier, this is kind of what kills this skill, but also not quite, it's weird. See, when we originally saw this switch go, we were shown that it reduced critical distance, which made sense. We're gonna get our distance cut in half, so we gotta get close. But in reality, what this actually does is it cuts your critical distance in half from both ends, at the back as well as the front. And that's the part that ruins it. So for normal ammo, which would just kind of benefit the most out of this, it turns the critical distance from just being like a few feet away from the monster out to like really far back. So instead of being this weird small gap where you kind of have to stay away from the monster but not too far away and it's really awkward to play in because the monsters are moving around a lot and you're going to end up losing your positioning a lot which is going to cost you your critical distance damage and you're just going to spend more time trying to get back into position so it's just really going to mess you up. Spread ammos also become hilarious either you're so point blank that you literally have to touch your gun to the monster to deal damage or you're at this weird zone where you can't get too close, but you also can't get too far. You have like this little ring you have to play around. It's like the whole like reducing the critical distance at the front end is the thing that really bothers me. Pierce is actually manageable with the silencer and stuff. You can play from like point blank out to like medium range. 
Um, but then again, you're gonna have to start investing in silencers and ballistic skills and sniper three and all that stuff. And you're just investing way more skills to make this work. And it's not even that big of a damage bonus, at least for, you know, spreads and peers. For normal, it's good, but normal is just got this weird zone that you can't really like get yourself out of. And I like the normal three damage. It was almost comparable to spread three damage. I just found that critical firepower and put you in spreads distance anyway, like actually even worse than spreads distance and spreads are stronger. So you just end up playing bad spreads. Like you're in the same distance, you're going to do slightly less damage and you're investing all these weird points and skills to make this like weird gimmick work. And there's no point. There are some bow guns that can take advantage of critical fire rate, like the Narga Kuga's light bow gun, and you can certainly manage the critical distance loss, but I'm actually just struggling finding reasons to do so. Sadly, standard spread 3 on light bow guns is so crazy strong right now, there's not much of a reason to use critical fire power or normal ammo in general. Rapid Fire Pierce 2 still works for sure, but it's actually the switch skill isn't really making the ammo more viable than it used to be because it's only 10% damage buffs. Rapid Fire Normal 2s with a 30% bump would be manageable, but they're still worse than spreads and even worse than Normal 3s. And then we're back to Normal 3s, which I mean again, good on paper with this 30% damage buff, but then now you're just playing in spread distance. And then why? Like, why would you bother playing with spreads? It's not like the armor sets are any better. It's not like it's easier to make normal armor sets into overspread armor sets. And then you can also run rapid fire spread twos, but those are another thing that I'm not really sure are worth using right now either. And honestly, it's not so much that the skill's bad. It's definitely usable and does make normal threes pretty solid. It's just that spread threes are so good right now. And the last boss's bow gun is so disgustingly good and overpowered that it kind of crushes everything else without needing the critical firepower skill. So for now, I don't particularly like this skill. We also don't have easy access to tune up, which is on spread armors right now, not pierce or normals, which is what actually needs it more. I also don't know the full list of decorations, so maybe there's something to unlock that helps gunners there, that chance, but we'll see. If you do want to use this switch skill, I do recommend that you use it on rapid fire pierce twos with a silencer. It does seem to be the most stable. Otherwise, don't really bother. The damage buff isn't really worth the change in critical distance and stuff, and all the skills you're gonna have to invest in it to just fix that. But that's critical firepower for y'all. I hope you learned something at least. Thank you for watching and good luck out there, hunters.